Hey guys. <laughs> this is the most comfortable chair I've ever sat in on stage. Hello. It's, I'm very tall, so chairs are not always made for a Swedish ergonomic. Yeah. I feel this is like, it's, it's like my, it's like, I don't know, I feel like I'm going to slide through it and just fold in half with the chair. So if that happens, please someone get it on camera. <laughs> So hello everyone, happy Sunday of the con. It's con Sunday where everyone's like, yeah, hi. Hi, I've had four hours of sleep collectively the entire week and that's just the normal thing. I always ask this question, so how many people are here for the panel and how many people just fell asleep in this room and woke up and like, oh, there's a panel. I might as well stay. Yeah, so this, I guess, so this is a My Hero panel Technically, and we're happy to answer your non-spoiler related uh, My Hero panel questions. I'll answer a spoiler related question, I don't well, care. Jamie will spoil everything for you. But for those of you that have been watching us this weekend, we all know each other and adore each other, and we tend to like, like give each other, we kind of razz each other. We love, we love, we love. This is probably gonna go off topic quite a bit. So just be prepared for that. So I'm J. Michael Tatum, I play Tenya Ida. I am Alexis Tipton, I voice May Hatsume. I'm Jamie Markey, I voice Mount Lady. And I'm Brandon McInnes, I voice Sir Night Eye. <laughs> there you go, yeah. You're doing great. <laughs> so we're gonna move this panel to Starbucks so everyone can get Every, coffee. Yeah, everyone, says, <laughs> everyone, a cold brew on us. Wait, no, that's far too many. A cold, you get a cold brew and that's it. Uh, <laughs> we're actors. Um, so who's, who's got a question to start us off? Who's feeling brave? Oh, you look, you're, you're gonna be a problem, aren't you? <laughs> What, what's your question? You could just, we're, we're so close. You could just project. So my question's for, for you and Brandon. Oh, great. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> we got this. Because I love him, that's why. <laughs> Not well. I think, oh, Nambaka. So the question for those of you who couldn't hear um, was how would our characters from My Hero, mine and Brandon's, re, uh, interact with our characters from Nambaka, which is <laughs> a prison show <laughs> with yeah, a lot but of make drag. Make it fashion, um, make it fashion. And it's awesome, it's awesome, but I just try to imagine Kiji, my, my very dragalicious character from, uh, from, <laughs> from Nambaka, dealing, I don't, I don't know, I think Kiji would kick Tinya's ass. <laughs> just to be like, will you stop being so extra, calm down. Uh, and Tenny would be like, this is insane, the hair's out of play. Like, I don't know, I don't see it going well. But maybe once the smoke settled like, and everything cleared, they'd be friends, I don't know, I don't know. And Tenya would come out of that, that arrangement with like the best hairdo of his life. What about you, Samon and, and uh, Sir Naidai? Yeah, that seems so like voiced, a match made uh, in hell. Or Samon Goku in, in Nambaka. And for those of you who've seen it, he's a lot. <laughs> mm. And Sir Naidai is very like Excel spreadsheet, accounting, put away 30% for your taxes kind of guy. Um, so I don't, I don't think they would see eye to eye, I think. Yeah, I, I think Samon would think Night Eye was like really lame, and Night Eye would think Samon needed a reality check. Yeah. yeah. All right, all right. Good question. Good question. Who's got another one? Shall I? Shall I just be the designated picker? All right. I see. Yes, you in the beautiful white. Our favorite role out of all the. Oh, we get this question a lot. So, so well, we've all been doing this for quite a while, right? And, and I know this is gonna sound like, like a, a kind of BS answer, but it's true. Like, we connect to our characters quite a great deal. They're part of us, you know, they, they, and you know, sometimes that you walk away from a show going, I now have a new facet of my personality that I've explored, and now it's gonna come out when I'm, say, at the drive-through or buying a car. Um, so they all become part of you, and it's really hard to pick a favorite because it's like asking me which, which is my favorite finger or which is my favorite toe. I like all of them. I'd like to keep all of them. Thank you. Um, but also, they, 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 they have their own little personalities, and they're all kind of still in my head, I guess, because I'm kind of crazy. And uh, so if I pick a favorite, and I think we all feel this way, right? If we were to pick a favorite, because it's, it's a good question. I'd like to answer it. But I have to say, oh, this character. And then I'd have like 400 and some odd other characters going, oh, not me? Okay, fine. <laughs> 
I don't want to deal with that. The way I like to adapt that question is, what is your most recent favorite? Yeah. Most recent. Yeah. What is your most, most famous favorite? Favorite. Fa- favorite today in this moment yes. is really the more specific one. And it can be a show that's wrapped or it can be an ongoing show. But your most recent favorite that you were like, I had so much fun doing that or this character really I, affected uh, me. I can't, I, there's one I'm working on now, but it, it's under Indiana, I can't talk about it, but I'll be able to talk about it at some point down the road, but we're having a blast working on that, so I can't answer. But I will say my next, my favorite character is whatever I'm playing next. Ooh, ting. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, okay, so my favorite ongoing character right now, in this moment, today, as I sit here in front of you all, is, <laughs> is uh, right now, right now, Sunday. right here, right now, <laughs> at... 12.34. Uh, Mine says 12.36. What? So for two whole minutes, this has been her favorite. Go. Wow. Kaguya in Kagi-sama Love is War. Uh, my favorite recent role that I um, wrapped that the show we're no longer recording on is Dominique Desaad in Case Study of Vanitas. And David Wald also directs that show, which just elevates the entire experience every time. He's wonderful. Um, yeah, that's me. Uh, mine right now in this very moment um, is going to be Junko because I saw my little Junko cosplayer. And so I'm going to say that right now. Brandon? Me. Uh, it's true. <laughs> Junko is, is a safe bet. She's because I'm Junko, I'm Mukuro, and I'm all the personalities in between. And uh, so it's like 10 different characters in one. So it really makes it easier for me. Oh, mine. Uh, mine right now is probably... Uh, Gyutaro in Demon Slayer. Yeah. Anyone know that little show? It's fine. Yeah. So, okay, here's a question then to spin on that a little bit. What is your favorite character in a show that no one's seen, that isn't as popular? Oh. Mine's definitely Tomazo in a show called Puzzle and Dragons. Oh. Um, it's like, it's one of the most kid-friendly shows Funimation's ever done. Uh, it's very family-friendly, and it's it's very much like on the the same in the same neighborhood as like Pokemon, Digimon, like that kind of thing. And Tomazo is like the Pikachu of that show. He's the only he talks. He actually physically talks. He doesn't just say his name. Um, and when we worked on that show for nine months, we birthed an anime baby with that show. And it's just I love it, and it's so good and so wholesome. And I love my little Tomazo. It's wonderful. I wish more people had seen that show. <laughs> Uh, for me, it's from a feature-length animated uh, anime film called Empire of Corpses, which came out several years ago. And um, I got to play a character who was a real guy at some point. The character, the characters in the, the, the movie is populated with characters both from fiction and, his, and history uh, from that kind of Victorian period. And I got to play this really interesting explorer slash adventurer, a guy named Burnaby. And it was just a really unique voice. We were going for a very, very particular accent, and I hadn't done, yeah, <laughs> Pittsburgh. <laughs> we, <laughs> we had, uh, he was a very, it was a, what's called a, um, a broomy accent from, from it's, a, it's, a, it's a variant of, of a UK accent from the north, and it was broomy. It was from a, for a, a time, certain time period in a certain region, very specific and a very important to the story that he sound like that. And so uh, uh, Mike McFarlane hired a dialect coach for all, because everyone had a weird dialect. There was very specific Russian, there was very specific, uh, uh, there, was, there were Indian dialects. It was really very cool because the show was just had a lot of, just a lot of richness to it. And uh, it was really fun to work on, but I also got to see it premiered, uh, the dub at least premiered in on the big screen in Dallas, and it was really fun yes, watching how much, like, um, everyone was great, but the crowd really loved my character, because the character was like that guy. That, that character was really funny, and everyone loves him. So like, I got all the laughs, I stole the show, cheering. it was amazing. Was and no one knew it was me, because it sounds nothing like anything I'd ever done before, and it was 100% sound like a new actor, and so everyone's like, who's that? And I was like, it was me. <laughs> I'm very proud of it. We had a lot of fun, and and it did pretty. It did okay, but it's you know it's a feature film, so they kind of come and go. But I I wish more people watch that because it's a it's a happens to be a really good movie, and uh, I think it's one of the best dubs uh, that we've done. And and you know it's probably in the past ten years. It's definitely up there in top five for me. So. Yeah. And there, that was a series of three movies that came out yes. all at the same time, and I was in another one. And I'd yeah. say that's for mine too. It's called yeah. Harmony, uh, You're so good. and it's, it's it has the most beautiful blood I've ever seen animated. <laughs> It drips into a cup, and it's just like hypnotic. It's I, I was offended by how pretty it was, um, but that's I would say that yeah, it was one of those other films. Um, yeah. Harmony is that one. Harmony. Uh, mine is from a show called Ninety One Days, which is a, a oh. mafia anime, 
and uh, I voice a character named Corteo, and he's just a sweet bean, and then stuff <laughs> happens, and I won't spoil it, but um, yeah, it's good, it's good. And he's not a sweet bean. A bitter bean. <laughs> Thank you. Bitter Thank bean. You. All right, let's see, let's take another question. Uh, let's see, you in the gray shirt in the second row, yes. Hi. So how long did it take us to transition to the home recording thing once the pandemic hit and, and with the simul dub schedule? Uh, we, do you want we to were, talk to that? Yeah, we were Physically out of... or emotionally? <laughs> emotionally, we're still trying yeah. to get a hold of that. Uh, physically, um, it took about one month. Um, there was one month where things were really uncertain. Uh, and then some fabulous engineers and a, a group of a group of people. I'm sure people from multiple areas of production. Um, at it was still Funimation at the time. They've now merged and it's Crunchyroll. So I'll just for the sake of argument, I will say Funimation. Um, they were able to put a lot of. Um, resources and a lot of really talented folks heads together to come up with a plan to keep us all working. So we were out of work for about a month and then our engineers at uh, Funimation basically devised this ingenious thing where they put together these things called actor kits, which were, were um, everyone got the same microphone, the same mic stand, we got uh, like an iPad, we got a pop filter, we got everything we needed for basic equipment. Um, and in the beginning, we had to learn how to rough engineer ourselves, which most actors don't know how to do, because why would we? Some people did. Um, they had a working knowledge of Pro Tools, but most of us, myself included, did not. Um, and so, and you know, no one had a home studio, no one had a booth, and so it was, okay, hurry up and treat a closet, or get a studio bricks, or whatever you can afford, or whatever your space can allow, somehow figure out <laughs> how to soundproof your space. And then we had all these engineers on call that we, they would do sound tests with us, and like make, and be like, okay, uh, it's still sounding a little weird, like can you pat it a little bit more, can you do this, can you do that? And so we, we just, people donated so much of their time to helping us. And what they would do is they would put together these actor kits in a box, you'd schedule a time to pick one up and they would just leave it outside the door at Funimation with like a security guard inside and you'd just like swing by, pick it up outside, be like thanks, and then like leave because we couldn't interact with each other. Um, and then they gave us instructions and it was one of those like, I was so overwhelmed. I was, I was like, I don't know what to do. This isn't what my brain is for. I'm an actor. I'm not an engineer. I don't get it. And it reminded me of that meme where it's like, are you going to cry? Are you going to boss the F up? Or are you going to cry about it? And I'm like, first of all, I'm going to do both. Um, <laughs> don't limit me. Let me cry, and then I'm going to boss up. Okay? So, yeah, it was basically hurry up and learn, because if you don't, you won't work. So that was very much... Um, a fire under everybody's butts. And uh, again, through the help of some really, really talented and patient people, we got it, we got it working and we got it working quickly. And Sorry. then I'll say by the next summer, um, yeah, you wanna do that? This makes <laughs> way more sense. Um, so by the next summer, um, we did uh, the directing for Tiny Tina's Wonderlands and that was entirely recorded from home. Everybody was at home they when they recorded that. Kit, so I had to pick up a different one. It depended. Some people had actor kits from Gearbox. Some people didn't. Um, you know, like I believe we sent one to Andy Samberg, um, and so it depended on who who was recording. But um, some people got actor kits, and some people just recorded in their closets with the stuff that they had. But we were prepared. Everybody, and if you didn't have a home kit, or you didn't have a home setup where you could record, you couldn't be cast in the game. So, uh, but everybody, that entire game was recorded at home. It, uh, it shook up the entire industry. Um, yeah. We were right in the middle of recording uh, Dr. Stone and Black Clover at the time. And luckily, Michael and I have, have this really nice booth at home. It's a Studio Bricks booth. Uh, that we just happen to have, you know, and we happen to have the same mic that they use at Funimation. And so when things shut down, I was in close contact with um, uh, the director of Black Clover, Chris George, and the director of Dr. Stone, Cliff Chapin, and we were kind of strategizing together, and Chris George also has a background as an engineer, and, and I said, Chris, I have Pro Tools. I don't, I don't really know how to use it super well, but I use this other program that's similar. And he said, well, let's, let's get on, jump on a call, and I'll, I'll teach you everything you need to know. Ha! Huh. <laughs> there's, there's so much in Pro Tools, but uh, he, he 
sat down and, and taught me a lot over this, this Zoom call. And then we, I, we did two or three Black Clover sessions where I was recording Finral, where I, was, I had the, the whole Pro Tools session running locally in my home studio, in our home studio. And Chris George is teaching me how to use Pro Tools. And so I'm trying to manage like the script and the video and the Pro Tools session and like previewing it in Japanese and then like trying to act. And it was, it was a lot for like three episodes. I was like, this is, I don't, I don't think we can make actors do this because this is, this is like too much for me and I'm already at an advantage. Um, I was, I, something y- y'all might not know is I was on the first Source Connect test oh, call really? that uh, Cliff, Cliff was trying to pitch it to some of the producers, and so I we uh, dubbed some Dr. Stone live uh, on a Source Connect call, and and Cliff was trying to make the argument, we can do this, we can do this, can we please do this? And so it was it was an interesting thing, and it, it, it worked. Because we, we already kind of had the technology for remote recording, because occasionally, um, yeah, like it, it was really, uh, it was a headache, and it, I, I said for years, I was like, the technology's almost there. It's just not so perfected. Close. This is so frustrating. I hate doing this. And then when everything shut down, it was like, we got to make the technology work, like right now. Life found a way. Yes. <laughs> Uh, what was funny about that, though, too, when it first happened is I had uh, recently re- finished recording a show called Cautious Hero, and then they did, like, this radio drama for, the I think, the DVD release, and so we had to record that. So there were no flaps. We just recorded it and was edited that way, but I was always the last one, which meant, like, it was all very timed out, but everybody else was always, like, a little over, so they would say their lines at a normal pace, and then I would have to say mine really fast so that I could get it in between, <laughs> what they did. Yeah, but that was it. I didn't have to do a video or anything. I thought that was, y'all were struggling. And I was like, sure, I'll read these words from this page. <laughs> <laughs> lucky, lucky. Yeah, nice. yeah. It's like we were working on Kaguya-sama season two when everything first shut down. And that's when we were rough engineering ourselves. And we worked on this episode. It was like, I'd barely been doing this. And there's an episode where Kaguya has like an internal courtroom scene with herself. So she's voicing. There's four different versions of her, it's, and is it I'm really having rapid? to like rough engineer the whole thing. And I'm like, oh my god, I'm crying. So yeah, it was. And, and then and then we worked it out to where an engineer we could just use a, a thing called um, Source Connect, and an engineer could just catch everything on the other side, so we didn't have to rough engineer ourselves anymore. It was a whole. We did not end all of that the way we started it. It was a huge evolution over the course of like two years. Yeah, and I tell you, I I learned a newfound respect for engineers having to kind of engineer oh ourselves god, yes. while for the first few months of the pandemic is oh my god it's hard it's real hard they're the unsung heroes of this industry um because a lot goes into every performance and it's not just our acting it's our acting is, a, is a obviously a huge part of it but like the engineers the mix engineers the recording engineers the directors all of it and it was it was weird not having access to that uh, immediate access to it the way you did in the old days where it's like everyone had to like oh wait the engineer's on come on it, there was there was just weird I mean it's technological and it was it was also strange because we're all emotionally having to act in the middle of living in a nightmare where it's like our, our booths are also our panic rooms. <laughs> We're like, I'm going to go in here and scream so my neighbor can't hear me. Um, but it's, it's interesting. I, in some ways, once, once we've gotten to the groove, I've found that I, I really like home recording just because... Yeah. You, don't, you, know, you don't have to wear pants. I don't have to, I don't have to wear pants. <laughs> yeah. Don't have to wear pants. I can look out. There's my dogs right there looking at me, judging my performance as I do it. And I need that. I really need their judgment. Sometimes you can't uh, wear pants because it's so hot. It's very hot. It gets very hot in that booth. Uh, it's hard to have air circulating in there because it makes too it's much noise. It's nice though because <laughs> we all have them. So like Michael and Brandon will come visit me, and I have my like home booth set up. So if they have sessions, they can just record it from my house. So they can so still nice. come see me, even though I'm 12 yeah. hours away from wherever they're recording, uh, whether that be Dallas or LA. <laughs> and so uh, that's kind of fun. And I've also noticed too that. It used to be, you know, a lot of people would be like, you know, I'm going to get into voice acting and I'm going to get a good microphone and people would talk to us about it and we'd be like, good for you. I just use a microphone at the studio. I don't know <laughs> anything about a studio setup. But now it's all like, okay, I've got this kind of setup and everybody's kind of upgrading their, the, you know, okay, now I'm going to upgrade my mic and now I'm going to upgrade my interface and now I'm going to upgrade my software and then I'm going to go back and upgrade my mic again and then I'm going to upgrade my interface. <laughs> so yeah, we're all many, kind of upgrading. How many times do you have to submit like what your equipment is to yeah. studios? It's like well, over and you'll and over be on, and over You'll again. be in a session and, an engineer, and some of these engineers are absolute geniuses. They'll be like, hold on, let's get that again. Is it cloudy outside where you are? <laughs> and you're like, yeah, but... 
Um, but yeah, it's 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 been a very interesting time, and we're kind of we finally after you know after a couple of years gotten into most of us have gotten into a groove, but we've all have learned the technical side of the industry more than perhaps we ever signed yeah. on for because like we don't we didn't become actors to actually be smart. We just want to play smart. That's right. It's much easier than being smart. I'm told. Um, who's great got question, question though. Really great question. Yeah, that was really good. Who's who's got another one? Who's got another one? Uh, uh, Mikasa in the back. <laughs> what was, what was, I, didn't, oh, I couldn't she, quite hear. Uh, so the question was, uh, what would we do if we had our character's quirks, or in my case, if I had my babies? Because <laughs> May, May has a quirk, it's Zoom. <laughs> uh, I you can see, like, I could zoom in on your face right now if I had her quirk. <laughs> um, yeah, no, if I, if I had my babies, uh, chaos. Chaos would ensue. True chaotic neutral, it'd be great. <laughs> I, would, I, I, would, I would get really big. And then... And then I would get to my normal height. <laughs> That's what I would do. Um, I, I think if I had Sir Night Eye's power, I would never use it. Just because I, I think some little sliver of hope and possibility drives me to some extent. Mm -hmm. So the thought of knowing something will happen in stone is a little depressing to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? You so feel like you don't have any control. People, I could use it to prank people. I might. Like, I know that, that person's going to come around the corner, right? In like five seconds. She'll be coming around the mountain <laughs> when she comes right now. <laughs> right now. If you had that power, though, I would never, I'm like, come on, tell me <laughs> what's going to happen. You, it would I would drive what's me crazy because of you. You would be like, what time are they going to be here? No, what time are they going to be If I had Sir Night Eye's power, I feel like I could relax for the first time in my life. I love your your different takes on it. Because he is not run by hope. <laughs> Done work. It's like caffeine does nothing for me anymore. Um, I mean, I still drink it. It's I like it. I like the taste of hope, but doesn't wake me up. Uh, <laughs> if I had Ida's power, oh my god, you guys, LA traffic is the worst. <laughs> and if I had Ida's power, it wouldn't be anymore. I'd be like, meh, just run, run to the airport. Oh, nice. Robert, like, no one, no one moves fast in LA. No one. Doesn't matter where you go, everything's a parking I lot. I mean, I guess I might stomp some convention centers that are holding groups of people I don't like. <laughs> like, there's one in Houston. People, there's one in Houston this weekend I can think of in particular. Um, <laughs> so maybe wow. I might do that. Wow. Just. This is why I don't have that power. Power was because I am not responsible. Your hands. <laughs> Edith Power is talking. <laughs> Much like the people in that room. That's his real quirk. In Houston. <laughs> uh, yes, you in the front row, with the the blue. NRA. Could you? Sorry, could you speak up a little more? It's. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I still yeah. can't. <laughs> uh, do we have? Do we have? Sorry. <laughs> sorry. That you're amazing. We, have we are, like but humble, anything. deaf voice actors right now. Sorry. We're voice actors, so we forget not everyone just likes yelling. Uh, at the very end. What was your reaction to My Hero Academia when you first saw it put, um, put together, like a full episode? I still didn't understand. I, I got it. I got <laughs> it. So sorry. What was your reaction when we saw it first? What was your reaction when you first... <laughs> When you first saw My Hero Academia, I like, feel like first. I such an old man. I'd be like, eh? What? <laughs> Why are you emotional? It's that. You gotta use yeah. your words, your mumble. Oh. Your mumble. Your mumble. <laughs> I'm, I'm becoming that person. You probably gotta form your words. Correct. Sorry, I'm kidding. Sorry, that's the question. Okay, uh, what was our reaction when we first saw our the character design for the characters we play? Um, I felt. It was the laziest casting imaginable for me. Yes, I'm like, absolutely. It just looks like me. It looks like me and acts mm -hmm. like. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love the work. They're like, oh, this. I love typecasting. It's how I got. It's my career. I mean, is that's money. Well, everyone like, looked yeah. at those sides and was like, that's gonna be Michael. Yeah, like, everybody. Everyone. <laughs> and I mean, look at me. I'm even talking about it like this, and I'll be in the booth recording, and it's like it kind of feels like the manga uh, like followed me around and like sketched me from the bushes, and like that was a creation. <laughs> and I'm like, I feel a little called out when I play. Tenya sometimes, because I get very like, meh, and, and I do this, and, and I'm, I'm doing it now. Um, and so it's like, yeah, I guess that's going to be me, because if it's not me, whoever it is is just going to have to do an impression of me, and who wants to do that? So that was my reaction, but it's actually really fun. I mean, it's, it's nice to feel like, oh, my, my personality type, which is 
so extra and hard to deal with in real life is now an entertainment. It's very validating. I feel that. <laughs> My, I, I didn't, there weren't sides for Mount Lady. I was directed into her read from, with someone else's sides. Um, and then when I saw her, I was like, Colleen, of course she has a big butt. And then Colleen said, it's typecasting. <laughs> Again, my mortgage doesn't care. <laughs> Neither do I. That's right. Oh, sure. Uh, so I did have sides for May, and I was very, and, and I'm fascinated about this still to this day whenever I see people cosplay as her because her hair is so strange. And so when you look at it, it's like, is it a sea creature? Is it like her hair? Just, it's, I'd never seen anything like her hair in an anime before, and it was super cool. And so, and, and every single time I see someone cosplay as May, is they have done different things for the wig. Like, I saw some people crochet things, some people just do like ringlets, some people do dreadlocks, some people do like, um, like batting, like foam batting, and like it's really cool. And so, it's really cool to see people's interpretations of how to make her hair in real life. <laughs> um, so, yeah, maybe she's born with it, maybe it's Maybelline. Woo! Ding. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that I was, but then I also have a thing with, I mean, this, this is not a personal thing. It just has worked out this way. Um, it was like, oh, it's another pink haired character. Of course. <laughs> That's my typecast apparently. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Colleen has very thoughtful casting. Uh, Colleen just casts very thoughtfully is, is what I mean to say. Lazily, but thoughtful. <laughs> I but mean, she thoughtful. knows us very well, so she's like, she this does. is clearly your character. Right. Right. I'm not going to have someone else well, do and it. And and most of the roles I had played call. before Sir Night Eye were all like, hi, I'm an anime protagonist, and I'm going to do the best job. And, and you know, um, and so I was like, this is different. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and so I was like, why Sir Night Eye, Colleen? This is a very different voice for me. And she said, oh, you're a software engineer. And I went, what? So I, I was a software engineer for six and a half years. I, I juggled careers. Um, and, and she said, give me, give me your best software engineer voice, Brandon. <laughs> and I went, we're clearly going to go over budget. And she was like, that's it. That's Sir Night Eye right there. And I was like, oh, okay. That's easy. So I'm not, you know. Didn't she also tell you, yeah. she's like, do your best Tatum impression. And so he did like, well, hello, I'm Sir Night Eye. Hello, she's I'm like, wait, 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 that's British. She's, and you were like, well, to be fair, you did say my best Tatum <laughs> So like, be, be tired, Tatum. Just hilarious, but yeah. 30% it makes it really for your fun taxes. because like you kind of feel, I, I find you feel you kind of have an instant connection to the characters because you're like, oh, I know this. I know this guy. Because Ida is very much like, I get that personality type. I share a lot of those traits. Um, you know, and, and so it's, it's, it makes it very easy to kind of slip into it. There's very little, um, you know, there's very little to figure out. It's just all, you're like, okay, yeah, yeah. So it's super fun. Thank you. Excellent question. All right, uh, let's see, in the, in the green dress, in the second row with the goggles. So not our favorite, our favorite character that's not our character. I, part of this is because I know Rico so well as a human being, but I think Mirio's my favorite because Rico Fajardo, part of it's because Mirio's just a great character point blank period but Rico who voices Mirio that's once again like that's just Rico it, it and is. so because is Rico, Rico is essentially a human golden retriever yes he brings that to Mirio and so every single time I hear Mirio I'm like this is just Rico living his best life which is what he does every day so it's just yeah. it's very endearing to me yeah we also <laughs> saw those Mirio sides well not all of us saw the Mirio sides but we saw the Mirio sides and we're like that, that's Rico it's one the of golden retriever Rico. that's Rico yeah <laughs> Um, I love, I mean, I love All Might. I think it's, he's an easy pick, but I mean, he's just such a fun, over-the-top character, and I love Sabbath's performance, and he's just like, I don't know, everything about, I think the show's, like, major themes are kind of encapsulated in that character and his relationship to Deku, so I really, really like that. But I'm also very partial to Sir Night Eye. I think Sir Night Eye is also fascinating. He's like the dark version <laughs> of, taxes. like, the, not the sinister version. <laughs> And, and I also happen to really love the actor that plays him. I mean, he's like my favorite actor, you guys. He's so good. He's so good. Why don't you marry him? Now there's an idea. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag did it. Um, uh, okay, I can't remember his name, so you're going to have to tell me. Joel Mac McDonald's character, he's got the belly light. And, it sh and then he's always like, my belly hurts. Oh, yeah. 
Oh my God, he's so funny. I cannot watch him without bursting into laughter. It's because it's Joel and that is 100% not Joel. And so it is, it, every time I see it, it kills me, kills me. Yeah, that's my favorite. Uh, I think mine's Mirio also, you know, uh, I just, a little, little ray of sunshine, Mirio. Though, I have to say, Ida is so you. <laughs> it's so Especially you. Especially at an airport. Oh. If you want to see Ida in real life, travel with me. Or, like, when we're, we're driving on the 405 to go to LAX to, like, park and get on the plane and come here. <laughs> That, that, mm, it's him. That's my internal That's his monologue comment 24/7. on the traffic on the 405 in LA. 405. Ah! Why are people going? They go faster. Oh my, what are you One of my doing? favorite things to do with Michael at an no, airport no, it's so mean. It's so mean. <laughs> is he's always like, we'll be like in the Admirals Club or whatever, having a drink or, or wherever. And, and he's like, guys, we only have 30 minutes. We probably ought to get to the gate. 30 minutes until boarding. Until boarding. So then we go to the gate. You monsters. And he leaves his stuff with us while he paces. I cannot sit still. Yeah, he can't. At an airport. So I he can't. wants to get there early so he can walk away. Yeah. And do drive bys. Um, and and check so. On everyone else. See what they're doing, if everybody's okay. So what I like to do is very quietly be like, Michael, I haven't noticed as many people. Do you think that our gate changed? Oh my God. <laughs> like. You know, good point. I'll go check. And then he goes and checks, and he comes back, and I'll be like, there were, I thought I saw there was a delay. Do you think that was us? Were we delayed? <laughs> it's so mean. It's so mean. It's very great entertainment. <laughs> you should change. For us, at least. <laughs> okay, true yeah. story, We have the app open, and, and nothing's changed. Yeah. Okay. The first time we did that, though, we were, <laughs> we were going to Ireland. Yes. And I didn't realize how bad it was, so we were sitting there, and we had, fi- we had found a place to sit and eat, and we had like an hour... <laughs> Before it's boarding, nothing, for that, so we had enough time to nothing. eat, and so we were sitting there, and he was like, "He's gonna need to know what time." And all I very gently was just like, "I think we're still at the game, same gate, but I, we might have changed." That's all I said, and he was up and out to go check, and like you could look it up on your phone. It's still the same gate. And I he don't went to the phone. Go, they don't always update on time. Would you not as well? It is totally worth it. Highly recommend so this doing is, it. Okay, so usually when we travel, I try to get an exit row seat um, because there's a little more leg room and I'm so tall, it's just a little easier. And, uh, but when you sit in the exit row seat of a plane, for those of you that don't travel or haven't traveled an exit row, uh, you are in charge of the emergency exit should something happen and they have to come to you. The, the, one of the flight attendants comes to you before the flight and is like, uh, may I get a verbal yes that you'll help in the event of emergency, blah, 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 blah. And you have to say yes, that you can't just nod. They'll be like, I need a verbal yes. So everyone's like, yes, yes. And I'm always like, yes. And one time, and it might have been on the same international flight, it was like one of those long, like 12 hour flights and I was sitting in an exit row and there's this big exit door right there. Right now, there's, there's just, it's just there, it's there, but it's also, there's the bathroom. So it's where everyone comes and hangs out when they just want to kind of stretch their legs. And so these people were hanging out and they were like messing with the door. They're like, we're in the air over the ocean. And these people are like, huh, uh, with the door. And I'm sitting there like, And they're like, they're sitting on it. They're sitting on the sign that says, don't sit here. <laughs> like, it's these animals. And I'm just, and I finally, I'm like, I'm, I'm sorry. And then they're like, they're touching the, the handle, the bar on it, just to see if it's cold. And like, oh, it's cold. And I'm like, they're just, I mean, it's freaking me out. I can't handle it. And so I'm like, excuse me, could you not do that, please? In a very serious voice. And they look at me and they were like, uh, we're just, we're just chilling, waiting for the bathroom to open up. I'm like, yeah, yeah, but you're touching the door. You're touching the exit door, and that's not to be touched. And they were like, oh, and they said something like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize you were like the exit door police. And I'm like, I gave a verbal yes. <laughs> and then they just kind of like, I mean, what are you gonna do? So they walked away, and I'm like, yeah, keep walking. Watching you every time. I take my responsibility seriously. That is my exit door. I love door. that about you. I gave a verbal yes. You did give a verbal yes. I'm capable of getting up and helping the flight attendants with the safety lecture at the beginning. I was like, mask, come down. Bring your seatbelt. Like, I'm panicking. I'm like, sir, will you please sit down? No, no, I'm helping. I've got this. <laughs> it's tragic. It's tragic. All right. Uh, uh, you, the, the white collar, the button shirt. Mm-hmm. 
I, most of us kind of find our way, we're all actors, you know, and we kind of consider voice acting just one more type of job that we can get, you know, but I, most of us started on stage. Uh, because that's what's available when you're a kid, you know, like the community theater, stuff like that. And I did a little bit of film when I was younger. Um, and, and we just, I, for me personally, I just kind of found voice acting because it was there. I knew somebody that was like, hey, you, you act, you want to try this? I like your voice. And I was like, okay. And, you know, that's the shortest version of that story I've ever told. Um, <laughs> but, but it was the thing. And suddenly, you know, it just, it, I got more work and suddenly that was what I was doing. And so now I'm like, okay, cool. So I, we, I think most of us think of ourselves as actors who happen to be known because of the voice work we do, uh, which is awesome. Uh, we love it. It's a great gig. But now I find I really prefer voice acting because I think most of us get into this because we want to explore different roles, different facets of our personalities. We don't want to have to wear pants. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, but if you do on camera acting, less so on stage, though there's, there is an element of this on stage, uh, but in, in, on camera acting you are extraordinarily limited by your by your appearance, your height, your, your age, everything is such a huge factor. So if I wanted to get, and this is one of the reasons I decided not to pursue uh, on-camera acting as I, as I got into my 20s, is because like, I would only ever get the chance to play like a cop or a lawyer or like you know, some guy in a suit who's the antagonist or you know, a side obstacle. And that's fine, I enjoy the work, but I got into acting because I wanted to explore different types of characters. And in voiceover, there's theoretically no limit to what you can do. As long as you can sound like it, it doesn't matter how much you resemble the character physically, though I know in my case I frequently play characters that look like me. Um, but I also play a lot of characters that don't, and it's super fun to get that chance that we wouldn't have in any other kind of acting. Because even on stage, you're more or less limited by how much you physically resemble the character as envisioned by the playwright or the director's interpretation of the material. And in voice acting, man, they don't care. They do not care. They're just like, can you do this? And so I've gotten to explore more of my acting range through voice acting than I have with more traditional forms of the craft. I still love doing all of it if I have the chance, uh, but voice acting is just kind of where it's at for me, personally. What do you guys think? Same, yeah. Same. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Same. The best thing about voice acting is that you don't have to strike a set or wait for lights. That is really like, and it's after doing it, people who know are like, yeah, that is awful. Like, you don't have sawdust, sawdust allergies in the booth. It's not a problem you have to worry about. Um, you don't have to sit in a makeup chair nope. for long. You, you, don't even, you don't have to do anything but just show up. And it's also, <laughs> there's something to be said too. Uh, improv is really important because it teaches you to trust your instincts. So it is really cool to have a job where you go in, you trust yourself, and, because you don't have any time with the script ahead of time, so you just trust yourself, make some decisions, and go with it. And it's just a, it feels like a fun acting exercise, whenever you, but it's our career. <laughs> it's now become this acting exercise. So, you know, I think that's what has kept a lot of us in it. In it. Um, and then the door is open for directing, for writing, for things like that, that have taken us, you know, in different directions as well. Um, it was extremely accessible when we first started, too. And it's funny because all of us have on-camera training, all of us have done on-camera, all of us have stage training, all of us have done stage work as well. Um, and so it's just another form of acting for us. But, but, but just to kind of uh, echo what everyone has said so far, I cannot stress how efficient voice acting is in terms of time compared with those other two forms of acting, stage and on camera. Like, in no other form of acting can you walk into your booth at home, record like for 15, 20 minutes, half an hour, if you're doing like pickups or something, and walk out and that's the gig, that's the whole gig. Like, it's, very, it's nice. It's really nice. Well, and, and with voice acting also, you know, with, with things like stage, stage not so much, but film definitely, if you have a principal role in a feature-length film, that's your job. That's it for, like, however many months or weeks or years in some cases. Thing. You know, you, because they, that needs, that requires all of your time, whether you're training for it, whether you're actually physically on set. Whereas with... Voice acting, like we can be working on 15 different projects at a time if we want to, or if that's what our workload is like that particular season. Um, so yeah, I like not being limited. You know, I, it's really nice to have like one thing that you can just like throw all of yourself into. I mean, that has, you know, that, that checks its own set of boxes, but um, for voiceover, I like being able, it's the variety I can work on. It's like, oh, well, I'm working on this show where I'm playing this like very 
demure, sweet, kind, whatever girl, and then I'm a crazy psycho in this one, or you know. So it's like it's not only what, like what Michael was saying about the range, and we're not um, held back by the way we look or how tall we are or whatever. It's it's also I can play a lot of these characters all at the same time, which is really fun, and then that keeps it fresh and interesting. Let's see. Let's go this side of the room. Uh, you would like the in the third row. You got like a floral pattern on. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Favorite line? Can you do in our voices? From my hero. From my hero. From my hero. Yeah. Yeah. From my so hero. I was like, favorite line? Oh, I can't say that out loud. <laughs> uh, I'll go. I'll go last. I won. I'll go last. Go ahead. I'll do one while you're thinking. I like this one because it's incendiary. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Uh, Sure, sure. All might chose wrong after all. Mirio should have inherited the power. And everyone goes, ooh. Ooh. Um. (laughs) My favorite thing that I've ever said in the booth has got to be Tanya going, a punch to the scrotum is unforgivable! I want the t-shirt. I want the t-shirt. Oh my gosh. This was, I I can't remember if she says this in the anime. She definitely says it in One's Justice, the video game. But it's like, I remember you from the Calgary Games at the Sports Festival. You totally told me your weak point then, but it was, uh, uh, mm, no, yeah, I forgot that too. (laughs) I can't remember the exact line. Um... (laughs) because <laughs> it's been a while, but uh, recently <laughs> when she's teaching them marketing and she's talking to Todoroki and he just doesn't get it and she's like, well, oh, you're pretty though. <laughs> so, that was, I love that one, yeah. All right, let's see. You in the front row, uh, yeah, in the, 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 you've got the black jumpsuit on, yeah. The to- sorry, You're the Todoroki. Pretty. Sorry. You're so pretty. <laughs> I was like, sorry, it's Sunday. <laughs> Chaos, utter chaos. First of all, they would never be in a room together. Uh, they just wouldn't be. You would not let that happen. I would not let that happen. Um, what was it, Kyoya and Sebastian? They'd, they'd end up as friends. And Ida, and Ida would just be running, screaming out of there as fast as possible. Like, he'd be anxious they were friends. He was like, oh my God, what's going on with you guys? Yeah, I don't know. That's a tall order. That's a tall order. I play a lot of characters who would not be friends and would not get along. And people are like, what would happen if they were friends? I'm like, they wouldn't be friends. That wouldn't happen. The universe would turn on its, on its head. So, uh, yes, you with the lovely drape sleeve. Um, I think they would love it. <laughs> They'd be like, oh, thank God it's you. <laughs> Man, see, now I'm just thinking about, like, our characters coming up to us and being like... Because, like, nothing's oh, coming yeah. out. Because, like, we're voicing what them. What do they sound like? <laughs> and then they're like... <laughs> they're like <laughs> it's like this horrifying realization. Is it a tweet? Maybe it's a tweet. Maybe they're tweeting their feelings they're about tweeting us. Their feelings. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I think Hatsume would think my vocal cords were, like, another form of, like, one of her babies. They'd be like, oh, is that your baby? It's like, Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I feel like Tenya would grade me. He would definitely he'd be like, mm, B minus. <laughs> B minus. Talk faster. Uh, yeah, I haven't thought about that before, but yeah, I think, I hope they would like us. I hope they would be like, mm, do better. Um, do better. I feel like that I would be. In my own voice, hearing, hearing myself say, do better. Yeah. Right. Night, night I would be underwhelmed as he is. Eternal like, like do better. What are you doing with your life? Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think Mount Lady might be like, you kind of sound like the villain. And I kind of love that. Yeah. Yes. I think that's how she. Mount Lady would be like, oh, I sound sexy. Oh. <laughs> Mount, Mount no, Lady no, no, would be no, no, like, no. oh my God, I sound like Samantha from Sex and the City. And I would be like, yes. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> okay. And I think next to the Todoroki, there was a question. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Any character ever? Mm. 
Yeah, I, I mean, you know, not to, it, it's kind of the job, you know, as an actor, you have to connect with your character in some way, even if, because, because, I mean, real talk, you guys, like, we're, you know, we're all adults, we're, we're, we've been in this industry for many of us, you know, over a decade, sometimes 20 years or more, and, um, we frequently have to be in shows that we are not the target audience for, right? Um, now, My Hero, I love My Hero, and we are absolutely the target audience for that, but there are plenty of shows like, oh, that this is for a younger crowd, that, that this, doesn't, this is not gonna hit me the way it will hit someone uh, who's in high school or junior high or something. And, but we still have the job. Our job is to breathe as much life into that show as we can, into that character, and so it's our job to connect, and we connect by finding what relates, and that's the thing. Like, that's, that's one of the beautiful things about acting, is that kind of, if you're doing it right, I feel, it teaches teaches you how to relate to anybody. And your job is now to just be true to what you think that relationship looks like and then hope the writer agrees with you. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I think we come away from just even the smaller roles, sometimes a role that you've spent little, very little time on because they maybe just come in and have one scene that has you know, a fun you know, moment or that makes a huge impact. Um, but you walk away and you remember it, you know, like that was me, that was part of me. I, I look at every character I've ever played, you know, however different their voice may be or their accent or whatever, it's really just me in a different story. Because I think depending on the story you're in and the situation you're in, it, you know, it's like outside pressures bring different facets of yourself to the surface. And frequently it's parts of yourself that don't drive, that aren't, that aren't the ones that kind of people associate with who you are. Uh, and so getting to like, be like, oh, this is what would happen if I was in this situation, this is what would come up and this is how I would sound, this is how I'd react, uh, is really interesting and really fun because that's kind of what acting is. You're getting to like live these really intense experiences um, from kind of a safe distance in a way, you know? And, and so, yeah, it, it's, I think it's our job to relate to every character we play or, or it's also a really fun job and if we didn't enjoy it or relate, like, man, We'd be in the wrong, there's too many people that would kill to get to do this job. And if I was like stooping to do it, like what a dick I'd be. I mean, I just, you know what I mean? Like it's such a fun job to get to connect with, with people and for you to give the audience someone to connect to in a way. Like it's, the, it's one of the best jobs in the world. <laughs> Not that we have a, a weird idiosyncratic soundtrack. But, but yeah, but, but thank you, yeah. Professional relators. What do you, Brandon, you pick someone, you pick, you pick. Oh, I, I pick someone? Oh, oh. Now that he's you, you were so fast. Yeah, I choose you. We'd rather get paid. The, the, the question was, do we like do we like more long form stuff like my hero that's been going on for years, or like more shorter stuff? Um, I mean, our bank account loves the long running stuff. Right. right. Um, but frequently, just because a show is really long doesn't mean that we're in it that much. You know, I mean, like where's Eda been for like three years? Um, just saying. Besides, in the background screaming, but. Uh, you know, but it, so it just depends. It's really fun in this. We don't often get to be with characters for very long in this business. I mean, anime is all about, hey, that one season that never gets a second season. Uh, cough, cough, or on. Um, <laughs> never going to happen. Never going to happen. Cough, cough, I don't panty believe and it. stocking. Yeah, right. So it's always fun to more, get to right? continue doing stuff. But yeah. yeah. Well, and I, yeah, it's like, like I think of the, the folks that are in the core cast of One Piece and how they've been doing that for like, 16, 15 years, that's too much. <laughs> yeah. Because it, it, at that point, it's like, hey, don't go anywhere for the rest of your life because you, like, to me, that's like, listen, people's lives evolve, they change, people move, that's a long time, that's a long commitment to stay in one place. So I'm not sure I would want something like that. But like, you know, I mentioned Puzzle and Dragons earlier, you know, that was a, I think it had like 75 episodes. That was really cool and it was really fun, especially since I enjoyed it so much. It was really fun being like, oh my God, yeah, like we got, I, I get to go up, I, you know, I get to go up there and do this thing that I love so much. Or um, I just got uh, done recording for uh, Reiju Vinsmoke in One Piece and she's in it for like a whole arc, which is like a hundred episodes, which was really cool. But again, I'm like the thousand episode thing, too much. That's too much. That said, um, I will say though, be, uh, I'm Kana in fairy tale. And thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you so much. I just love her. She's the best. Uh, so um, when that ended, like she had been a part of my life for over a decade, go, right? So that, yeah, yeah, that was a very weird, like it was just done and it was over and she was no longer 
something that I was going to experience. And that was, it, it, it took me back a little bit. That's the first time I've, you know, like you, you're sad to see characters go, but when you have them for that long, it was like, like a loss I had not expected. You get attached to them. They're like friends that you see. I don't know how to describe it, but you go in for session and like Black Clover, 150 episodes of recording Finral, and, and he's my boy. He's, he's me, right? Like, because we're, we're all professional relators. We are paid to relate to these characters, to embody them, to be them. We are them when we're recording them. And so you get attached to them as, as your friends many of these times. And yeah. so it, it feels nice to go in and, oh, see, see how they're doing, see what they're going through. Are they okay? And then when we wrap a show, it's this very strange feeling yeah. of loss. Yeah. And, that, and then that over a decade like that was the, what was weird is like over like for half my career I've been voicing this character it's wild and then it's and now I'm not but maybe maybe there will be more I don't know I hear rumors uh, I would love to a different experience with Fairytale because I'm Acnologia and he shows up like early thought, on it was and then like 10 years go by and like finally he gets more to do because he, he's not like discussed but it's uh, that's interesting it's it's always fun to come back and interesting to come back to a character that you've been away from for a little while like with Black Butler that happens you know it's like oh we're gonna do a season and four years later we'll do a movie and a different season so it's like every few like where am I in life now um, you know yeah it's it's really cool but yeah <laughs> So we have about a little less than 10 minutes left, I believe. So what I'd like to do is a lightning round. Just, uh, this is really more a challenge to myself than to you. But we're going to do this, like try to ask questions we can all answer quickly. So ask a quick question, like try to just belt it out. And then, and then, and then we'll try to go and yeah, we'll, we, have yeah, to we have to answer as fast as possible as well. So yes. The, the and other try to get, so hold, hold your hand up if you have a question. Yeah, hold your hand up keep and it just up. keep it up. Okay, and we'll just, so, we can just move left to right or left to right. I love it. Yes, yes. Okay. So, so, so we'll start again. Yes, you go. Stain. <laughs> Lightning round. <laughs> oh, sorry, my, my turn. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I should say midnight. <laughs> uh, I'm a lover, not a fighter. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> wah, okay, wah. Todoroki. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's like there's serious grief. You're like, oh my god, there goes unless, my work. But also, I love this character, and they're unless gone. Unless they get you know? a cool death scene, then that's really fun. <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh yeah, we're gonna yeah. go out with a bang. <laughs> but also sad. A yeah. uh, quick, quick lightning story. I know, uh, but I play Erwin, and uh, when he died, spoilers. Um, like, I haven't watched a single episode since then, and it's not because I'm mad at the show. It's because I feel like if he doesn't get to know it, I don't get to know it, and that's how I process it. So I have no idea what's in the basement. I have no idea what became. I don't know who they chose. Nothing, and I refuse for a long time yet to watch it because that's how I grieve for him. Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. You. Favorite AOT character? Oh God! Uh, uh, the horses. The, I go get them a lot. The horses. We love the horses. The horses. Yeah. I love Hanji. I love Hanji. The is wall that that's the doing its best no. to protect everybody and is just not mm, doing a good not. job. Oh, slay. <laughs> it's almost like walls aren't the answer. <laughs> oh snap! <laughs> Okay, Corel. Lightning. Write a book? Write a book about anything? Oh my God. Uh, I'm writing a book right now. Anyway. My life, and it has a happy ending. Uh, how not to move to Japan. <laughs> That's How true. to survive getting sued for defamation for saying someone did something that they also said they did. Ooh. You. Hardest, Hardest voice. voice. Hardest voice. Gyutaro and Demon Slayer. Scar from Full Metal Alchemist. Uh, Lucina as Marth shouting. <laughs> mm, the Monokuma voice from uh, d uh, trying to imitate Don from Dong and Rampa. Uh, uh, okay. Greg uh, Ayers. Greg Ayers. Yeah. Trying to match Greg Ayers. Scratchiness. Scratched me. Okay. Yeah. Scratch me. Okay. Uh, uh, we'll keep going this side and we'll go back to this side in a second. So, uh, yeah, in the white. In the white. 
bad trait about us or one of our characters? I say too much in public. <laughs> See earlier defamation comment. <laughs> anxiety, anxiety. Uh, perfectionism, perfectionist tendencies. Raging ADD. <laughs> Hey, everyone's like, oh, relatable. Okay, yeah, we do blonde wig, yes. Uh, the scene in the alley where they're fighting Stan and he says, I can't watch this. <laughs> the one where I tell Todoroki he's pretty. Uh, n uh, Night Eyes hospital scene, both of them. Mm. Uh, the whole Dave thing with, <laughs> with uh, All Might, where he's like, Dave, my friend Dave. Dave, <laughs> Dave. Dave. <laughs> Uh, yes, you, the glasses and the black hoodie. Uh, your most challenging lines. Most challenging lines. Uh, what is it now, Daddy, from, uh, from, uh, from Oron? Because I couldn't say it sexy, and I don't know how else to say it. Uh, Can confirm. Speaking full Russian monologues in How Heavy Are the Dumbbells You Lift in Russian. <laughs> nice. Um, uh, let's see. <laughs> There, there, I, there's a show, Black Cat, I played Rin, Rinslet Walker, and she had to talk a very high-tech things that I didn't know how to say, and that was just challenging getting the sounds out of my face right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the, like the 15 second scream in Demon Slayer when Gyutaro and Uzui are fighting. <laughs> okay, uh, yes. That's all I remember. It's been too long. It's all <laughs> That's my favorite answer of anything ever. <laughs> oh, um, oh my god. Um, and then they had all turned into assholes. <laughs> Uh, hey, da, 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 da. I don't think I have one. No, my character says the same thing. It's just who are you over and over and over again. You there you go. <laughs> Easy. Uh, okay, uh, well, you've got like red, red hair. Yes, 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 you. How would I, what? It was great, very therapeutic. <laughs> Everyone should kill their spouse at least once. It's really great for the relationship. I got to kill Brandon, too. No, no, no. I killed your whole family. That's what, what it was. What? In what? In what? It's like your, your origin story, I think. Oh, okay. I'll tell you later. But I like, I texted you. They're going to fight now. I'm like, I'm getting to murder your whole family right now. I remember okay. that. Okay. Uh, yes, now you, uh, you've got the blue mask on. Prior to being cast in, uh, blah, uh. Uh, I was a huge Rurouni Kenshin fan, and so when we did the live-action Rurouni Kenshin films, and I got to play Kaoru, I was, I did, as our director put it, I did the happy pee pee dance, <laughs> which is where it's, it's almost like the berries and cream dance, where you're like, ah, 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 berries and yeah. cream. That's great. Oh. Was that what's what's a show that you were a fan of before you were cast in it? Oh, movie. Also. Movie also, whatever. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Card Captor Sakura. The, uh, the reboot, nice. clear card. Uh, for me, it's Steins Gate. I got to know the show really well, and then I, then I was cast in it oh, after right. Well, yeah, yeah I guess because I wrote, I wrote the adaptation before I was in it. Panny, from Panny and Stocking. Yeah, 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 nice. Okay, yes, the uh, Deku. <laughs> what would he teach? What? Uh, bottling. <laughs> <laughs> what would he teach? Feeding cats? <laughs> feeding, feeding cats, feeding cats. How feed cat. um, yeah, how to deal with brats. Um, how to deal with rich trust fund brats that can't tie their own shoes. What, huh? Same difference. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, yes, the rainbow sleeve again. Ha <laughs> ha, none of your business. Uh, <laughs> buy my biography. No, it's coming out in 40 years. Uh, I, God, no, I, no I, I don't know. It's not family friendly. I can't, no, 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 no. Different panel, different day. Uh, I'll tell you when you're older. I won't say a specific line, but everything I had to say is Yamada's Eros deity and, Yam and Bigata HK. Oh, and also like- You're 80, welcome. Thank you. I wrote um, those. <laughs> also 80% of the stuff that Rika says in Hog and I. So. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not easily offended when I say, I don't get embarrassed very easily, so. It's very true. Very yeah, true. that's why I can write all these horrible things for other people to be embarrassed by. 
What about you? Most embarrassing thing you've said in the booth? Uh, uh, um, everything in gamers, gamer Kata Amino, where like she's really hot at the water park, and she's like, "Hey, what do you think?" And he's like, "Ah, oh, looking good, champ." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we have time for one more, one more. Uh, 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 someone ask one. Uh, he's, you in the back? If the, uh, yes, you in the back? Yes. This was a lightning round. Now <laughs> we want to think about this. Uh, Sebastian, Sebastian, Sebastian. Um, Especially if CL told him he had to survive. There's no choice. Yeah, so that, that's my answer. Uh, Gyutaro, Demon Slayer. It's the demon theme. It's the, yeah, it's the demon thing. It's the demon. Demon. Definitely Saya Kisaragi from Blood Sea, uh, Kurumi Tokisaki from Data Live. Because she just reincarnates. Oh, she has clones, so you can't kill her. If you kill one, she comes back. Um, I don't know, kid trunks. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, Junko, uh, Witchblade, and yeah. Panty. Yes. Nice. Yeah. And you had Gutero, right? Gutero. Yeah. Gutero. All right. That's it. All right. <laughs> That's it. That's it. The music is like this. <laughs> Guys, thank you so That's much great. for coming. Thank you. Appreciate you here. Uh, yeah. This is Bo Billingsley, and you're watching the Fandom Spotlight. Be sure to like and subscribe, but more importantly, have fun and follow your fandom.